Hello friends, welcome to our broadcast. I am Larry Hutton and this is Limitless Life, where we talk all about what the Lord Jesus has done for us and a better covenant established on better promises where we're not talking religion, we're talking a relationship with somebody that wants you healed in your body, somebody that wants you financially free out of debt and plenty of money, somebody that wants you so full of peace and joy that people wonder if you're really faking it all the time because you're so happy. <laughs> That's the kind of life God wants us to live man, the good life. You know, I tell people all the time as I travel, I said, Christians ought to be the happiest folk on the planet. When we think about what Jesus has done for us, oh my goodness, it gives you something to shout about. And, and the Lord told me this. He said, you know, if you, if you don't have something to shout about, then your eyes are on yourself. They're not on me. Because <laughs> if they're on him, this is a day that who made? the Lord made. And what are we supposed to do? Rejoice and be glad. So, I mean, if we're not shouting the victory, you know what I'm talking about when I say shouting, I'm talking about shouting the victory. If we're not declaring the heavens from the housetop, declaring the Lord Jesus from the housetop, then we got our eyes on our problems, our, our own selves, our inadequacies, our failures and all that stuff. But we don't have to do that. We can keep our eyes on Jesus all the time, focused on Him all the time, and in Him live, and in Him move, and in Him have our very being, and let Him live through us, and us live through Him. And that's the abundant life that's available to every child of God. So that's what we're about on this program, uh, Limitless Life, because when you have the real Jesus, not religion and religious Jesus, you know, when you have real Jesus, the living Lord and Savior and King and Redeemer, when you have Him running your life, it's going to be the abundant life. Remember He said, I came that you might have life, but I want you to have it not just life, but I want you to have it more abundantly. That is where we have a, a life that we're contented with, we're, uh, we're happy, we're full of joy, we're at rest, a uh, state of tranquility and mentally and emotionally. Uh, just blessed in every realm. That's the kind of life God wants us to live. So that's what we're uh, all, always ministering and sharing on this program in whatever area we are talking about. You know, we try and deal with different areas of our lives that, that will affect our lives here on the earth so that we can live a better life. God wants us to live the good life. Amen. I know when I travel, if I ask people, are you a happy person? Boy, I can get a lot of different answers, but we ought to be. Uh, Christians, uh, whew, man, God has redeemed us, redeemed us from sin, redeemed us from sickness, redeemed us from poverty and lack, redeemed us from despair, from fear, from panic attacks, from depression, from guilt, from shame, condemnation. Wow, he, man, that, that, is, that is something to be happy about. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, so let's get back into what We've been talking about now for the last four weeks. This will be our fifth week that we're discussing this subject. Uh, so if you haven't gotten to catch up, we're doing a series. We titled it Mental and Emotional Freedom. It's an area that a lot of Christians have been unaware of, that they've been redeemed. You know, they just thought, well, you know, yeah, Jesus redeemed me from sin. So when I die, I'll go to heaven. But he also redeemed your mind, your emotions, your mental state, mental faculties so that you don't have to be up and down emotionally or all over emotionally. You can live in a peace. In fact, we've looked at it already where Paul said you can live in peace 24-7, 365. And when people don't think that's real, uh, I can relate because I didn't think it was real either until I, I was taught this by the Lord Jesus himself. And when he taught me this, how to never have another down day the rest of my life, how to control my feelings instead of my feelings controlling me and use God's self-control, a fruit of His Spirit, and use God's peace and God's joy to control my emotions. My down days were over. My guilt-ridden days were over. My shame-filled days were over. My uh, hurt-feeling days were over. My bad temper, anger days, flying off the handle days were over. I mean, you, every negative emotion, all of those days were over. Now I just have the moments because Jesus said, in the world, you're going to face them. You're going to have these things come against you. But he said, be bold and courageous. I've already overcome them for you. So we don't have to allow those emotions, those negative emotions to stay when they, we come, when they come. We get to choose and we can replace them with the joy of God. We can replace them with the peace of God. And we already saw that that peace of God passes the understanding of human intellect. 
it's hard to comprehend and figure out uh, with your mind. But then uh, spiritual things aren't naturally discerned, the Bible says, so we do have to uh, we do have to let the Spirit of God in us, teach us, and enlighten us, and then we get, a, get the revelation. Jesus said when you know the truth, that means you get the revelation of what God's actually saying in the Bible. When you get the revelation, it'll make you free. And that's what happened to me. I'm, I'm a living testimony. I have not had a down day in many, many, many years. A couple of decades, mo longer than that, long time. <laughs> I haven't had a stress-filled day or a worry-filled day. I haven't had a uh, get-my-feelings-hurt-filled day. When those moments come, when I, when I have those feelings come against me, I know what to do to take, take them captive and cast them down. Remember the Bible said, casting down every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So if we know what God says, we can make a choice and say, no, I'm not allowing that feeling and that emotion that came as a thought. I'm not allowing that to stay in my, in my life. I'm, I choose God's way. And we found out in the Bible that God calls his way mentally, emotionally, calls it the way of peace. And we've studied out a lot of those scriptures. So let's go back to Isaiah 53, Isaiah 53, verses 4 and 5. And we will read, this has been our foundation text each, each program. Uh, verse 4 said, surely that Jesus has borne our griefs, says he, that's talking about Jesus, Jesus bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Now, anybody that could read those words know that griefs and sorrows are emotions. They are feelings. They deal with the feeling realm of our minds, our mental states. So if somebody's down with grief, down with sorrow, uh, their emotions are being weighed down. And we've already looked at the verses that those are very dangerous emotions to allow to stay. Uh, depression, discouragement, hopelessness, guilt, shame, all those emotions weigh you down, Jesus said, and cause you to not hear what the Spirit of God's saying. So then you're wondering why other Christians are hearing the voice of the Lord, hearing God's leading and their leading, but you've been praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and you're not getting any leading and you're wondering why. Because these negative emotions uh, weren't, or God didn't design us to carry these negative emotions is how I should say it. They, these negative emotions uh, are not supposed to be part of our lives. So when they come, we have to resist them. So it says, surely Jesus bore our griefs and sorrows. We found out that word grief and sorrows. If you look up the Hebrews, it includes every negative emotion from depression to bad temper, to hurt feelings, to guilt. I mean, you name it, every negative emotion is carried here. Uh, in these two Hebrew words, grief and sorrow. And then verse 6 says, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. I mean, verse 5, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And we found out that that simply means that anything, any situation, I guess you, the easiest way would be to say any cause or any reason for us to feel down or depressed or stressed or worried or panicked or whatever negative emotion you want to mention, the reason for us to feel that way, Jesus faced every one of those causes, every one of those reasons, and defeated them for us as well. So if you take one thing, for example, let's take, let's take, um, let's take stress. Stress is a type of fear, uh, but let's take stress. Somebody's really stressed out about something. Uh, Jesus bore your stress so that you don't have to be stressed out about anything, but then he faced every reason or cause before you ever did, he faced the reason you're going to be stressed and he defeated that reason. Isn't that cool? So that is so cool because he, he bore every negative emotion, but then he faced the reasons and causes that I would be facing and he defeated them so I don't have to. I just love it. I mean, he, he took care of everything for us, man, from, from A to Z. No wonder the Bible says he's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the beginning and the end to our faith, man. He flat took care of everything. And that's why I say we ought to be happy, folk. Christians just ought to be happy. If we'll get our eyes off of Jesus, I mean, get our eyes off ourselves and onto Jesus, like Hebrews says, looking unto Jesus, right? The author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, suffering the shame, even though he despised it. But then it says, consider him, consider him. Lest you, be, lest you faint and be weary in your minds. 
So I'm just telling you, based on what Jesus has done at Calvary, we do not have to be depressed. We don't have to be fearful, have panic attacks. We don't have to have any of that going on in our lives. When it comes, we get to make a choice, and we've discussed that. Let's go back over to 1 Peter chapter 5 now. 1 Peter and chapter 5. And notice verse 7 again. We were talking about this verse, casting all your care. Uh, it doesn't say cast all your care. It says casting all your care. And um, uh, the Lord told me, I told you this, the Lord told me, don't, uh, uh, you don't start a verse or a thought or a sentence or a paragraph with the word casting. Uh, so when we went back and read, you know, we got to the end of verse five, God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you due time, casting all your care. In other words, humbling yourself by casting your care opens up, according to verse 5, the grace of God in our lives. And remember, come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to what? Help. You need God's grace. I need God's grace. We couldn't have got saved from sin without it. And guess what? You can't get saved from sickness without it. You get, can't get saved from depression without it. You can't get saved from poverty or lack without it. You can't get saved for, from panic attacks or, or guilt or shame or bad temper. You can't get saved from any curse without God's grace. It is by grace that we are saved through faith so that we, we have to believe and take hold of what God says and that's what releases grace. And so when you, when you take this kind of passage backwards, casting all your care, and you go back up to verse six and it says, you humble yourself when you cast your care. And then verse five, when you humble yourself by casting your care, verse five says, God gives you grace because you're humble. <laughs> Praise God. So that, that, that ought to be something we want to do then. Just cast, get rid of that depression. Get rid of that stress. Get rid of that worry. Get rid of that hurt feeling. Get rid of that anger. Get rid of it because it's pride. What's the opposite of humble? Pride, right? God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble, verse 5 says. And so humble yourselves, verse 6, by, verse 7, casting all your care. And, of course, we talked about this, uh, this word marimna, and how Jesus used this word different places so that we could see uh, how dangerous it is for us to keep this care and how uh, um, deceptive it is. So many people, I mean, if somebody's depressed, they don't even realize it's, so de it's a deceptive form of pride. People don't realize when I'm depressed, I'm in pride. When I'm stressed or worried about something, I'm in pride. When I'm all mad and flying off the handle, I'm in pride. When I'm, when I'm full of guilt and full of shame for what I did or something, I'm full of pride. God doesn't want you doing that, man. He wants you, he wants you casting. He says it right here. How much? How many? Look at verse 7. How many of your cares are you supposed to cast? All. He didn't say most. He said all. So if you're carrying a care, get rid of it. God wants all of them gone. He knows you weren't designed to carry him and, and, he, and he loves you so much. Look what it says, casting all your care for he cares for you. God loves you so much. He cares for you so much. He doesn't want you carrying a care because he knows you can't handle it. So just go ahead and let him be Lord of it. Hallelujah. So let's go back to Luke 21 where we left off last program. Uh, Luke 21, we were noticing this same word, casting all your care, the Greek word marimna. It's used here in Luke 21, 34. Jesus said, take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting drunkenness and what? Cares of this life. So that day, talking about the return of Jesus, uh, take you unaware. You're unaware of what the Spirit of God's saying, what God's doing, the, the move of God on the earth, the Holy Ghost moving. You're unaware of it because you're weighed down. The Bible said your hearts are overcharged. We found out that word hearts is talking about your emotions or your feelings. Your feelings are overcharged. Um, overcharged means overburdened in the Greek or weighed down. And I pointed out last time, notice the three things that it talks about weighing down. Two of them involve alcohol. The third one involve uh, a mental alcohol, <laughs> if you will. Um, surfeiting, that's alcohol. Drunkenness is alcohol. And cares of this life. God actually puts the cares of this life in the same category as drunkenness and giddiness that's caused from drinking alcohol. He's actually saying you're just as bad off as a drunk if you're full of care. 
If you're full of worry, if you're full of anger, if you're full of depression, discouragement, hurt feelings, guilt, shame, uh, frustration, all these different negative emotions, he said, you're no better off than a drunk. And then you put yourself in a position where you're not hearing from God. But I love the fact that Jesus said, take heed, didn't he? Take heed, look at, look at the first couple of words, and take heed to yourselves. Not take heed to your spouse, not take heed to the one that's hurt you, not take heed to the, the, the thing that's messed you up emotionally. No, take heed to yourselves. All right, so now I'm, I'm doing a self-checkup here. Uh, lest at any time my emotions get overcharged. Overcharged, overburdened, weighed down, whatever definition you want to use because if you take any negative emotion from bad temper, anger, to depression, to guilt, shame, to frustration, hurt feeling, they're all causing the emotions to get stirred, overcharged, weighed down, and all those things. But, but Jesus said, take heed. You know what that means? To me, take heed means you don't have to. You don't have to Take heed lest at any time. So this means any time, no matter what time of month, what time of year, what time of life, what time of anything. I remember when I entered my 50s, um, I was born in 1954. And when I entered my 50s, I remember some people saying, well, get ready. You're about to enter that time of life, that time. Well, he said right here, take heed lest at any time. So that time of life is included here. I don't have to be weighed down. They said, oh, yeah, get ready. You're going you're gonna to go through midlife crisis. <laughs> so I, I went through the scriptures, tried to find midlife crisis. I couldn't find it. All I could find is midlife blessing, <laughs> early life blessing, midlife blessing, later life blessing, old life blessing. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep walking in the blessing. And you can, too. You could choose. He says, take heed. Take heed's a warning. Let, let, me, let me give you an example. Let's say that I invite you over to my house for a meal. And let's just pretend for a moment that I have a, a uh, Rottweiler trained attack dog that was trained in the Gulf War and, and went into Iraq in numerous occasions and killed 12 different people on of all of his missions. And, and uh, let's say I just had, I don't really have one, but let's just say I had one. And I invited you over for dinner. But before you came, I said this to you. Now take heed when you come to my house because I have a large black Rottweiler uh, killer dog. Uh, and so just be aware that when you get here, I, you know, I want you to make sure that you don't just walk in the gate and, and not give me a warning. So uh, I'm letting you know in advance. And for me to tell you take heed, how would you interpret that? Wouldn't you say, well, Brother Larry must really like me. You know, he gave me a warning that I don't have to be his dog's lunch or dog dinner. You know, uh, I'm going to go to his house for dinner and not be dinner. Right. So so for me to say, take heed, then then I'm actually loving you enough to give. Come on. If I come on, if I didn't love you, if I didn't care about you, you know what I'd say? I'd say, hey, come on over for dinner. Period. <laughs> Not even tell you anything. Let you walk in and be dinner. <laughs> no, but for me to actually say take heed, it means I'm warning you, you do not have to have this happen to you then. And this says take heed lest at any time your emotions get overcharged with alcohol. So it gives us warnings of alcohol here. Uh, surfeiting, which is drinking a little alcohol. Drunkenness is drinking a lot of alcohol. And then the cares of this life. That's, that's, the, that's the messes that put people uh, in uh, a tailspin down into the dumps, so to speak. Um, let me show you, while we're talking about it here, we're looking at this word marimna. And let me show you another place Jesus uses it so you can see uh, why we're supposed to cast these cares. Uh, go over to uh, Mark's Gospel, the uh, fourth chapter. Let's look at the parable of the sower here. I won't take time to read it all, but... Let's um, read a portion of it. You know, after he reads, after he says the parable, then he tells us that the sower sows the word, you know, in verse 14. And then he gives the uh, explanation where he actually expounds on and teaches what he meant by the parable. Uh, so let's pick it up, the parable of the sower. 
This actually talks about four types of ground. It talks about the wayside ground, the stony ground, stony ground, the thorny ground, uh, and the good ground. So let's talk about that. And you know the ground, I, you, you probably know this, is, is, being, uh, is referring to the soil of the heart. So let's just pick it up here. And just in case you've not learned this yet, Satan is the one that's behind the attacks in all three grounds that are mentioned first before the good ground. The, the wayside ground, the stony ground, the thorny ground. He's the one that's behind all of those trying to get the word out of you. So let's pick it up. The sower in verse 14 sows the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they've heard Satan comes immediately takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. So right off the bat in the first ground, wayside ground, God establishes who it is behind the attacks that are trying to steal the word because God knows and Satan knows that if you take the word and you stand upon it, it's going to be a foundation that keeps you from falling, keeps you from sinking, keeps you from going down and going under. It'll put you over life. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, verse 16, and these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. Now remember, in context, this really wasn't another verse. And as a conjunction, I mean, I'm going to carry, I'm going to let you know what else Satan does. If, he, if Satan can't steal the, the seed real quick off of the wayside ground, then he's going to try and get it on the stony ground. Look what it says. These are likewise they who sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, but they have no root in themselves and so endure but only for a short time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake. Aha, uh -huh. so the affliction and persecution is trying to get the word. And what is the previous verse or who does the previous verse tell us is trying to get the word? Satan. So we know that Satan then is bringing the afflictions and persecutions to try and take the word. And it says they are offended. Verse 18, and these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. And the cares of this world, notice that word cares, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things enter in, choke the word, it becomes unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, receive it, bring forth fruit, some 30, 60, 100 fold. So notice verse 19, the word cares, this is the word cares that we're seeing in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7, casting all your what? Cares. This is the same word meremna. And uh, it's so important to get rid of this maremna, this, this depression when it comes, this stress when it comes, this worry, this hurt feeling, this bad temper anger. It's so important to get rid of it because maremna turns into what it, what it actually comes out of. If you look at this Greek word maremna, it comes from a, a root word in the Greek language, maridzo. And maridzo means, well, let me read W.E. Vine's expository dictionary. Uh, Vine says to draw into different directions. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Actually, uh, this is Vine's, this is Vine's uh, definition of marimna, to draw in different directions to distract. So we saw that the cares, marimna, which we originally talked about, the troubles and cares and worries. Now Vine's is letting us know it's, it's to draw us and distract us. But it comes from the word maridzo, which means to disunite or to divide. It means to part, disunite, divide. Uh, in other words, you and I could say cut into pieces. I can, I can show you real quick, my goodness, another place where this word maridzo, we have a couple minutes yet. Look at uh, Matthew 12, 25. Matthew 12, 25. This is the word maridzo, which marimna comes from, maridzo. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought into dis desolation and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. The word divided here is the word maridzo, which is what care, mar mar casting all your marimna care. It comes from this root word and this root word means to Divide, divide. And that's why every house divided itself can't stand. So Satan, back to our text here now, Satan brings these cares, the cares of this world to divide us from the word so that it will do what the root talks about to part or disunite us from the word. And when that happens, that's when we feel all messed up and when we feel like things are falling apart and people say, man, my life is in pieces. 
Well, Satan is using those cares and he uses all forms of cares, negative emotions, feelings, and he uses them to do what? This said to choke the word so that it stops producing what? Fruit. So that it stops producing fruit. Well, peace is a fruit. Joy is a fruit. So if, if Satan can bring this worry and this depression and this stress and all of this on us and we allow it to stay, then it's going to part us from the word. It's going to divide us in the, from the word and then we're going to feel like we're falling apart. We're going to feel like our life is falling apart and cut into pieces and we're going to be finding coming out of our lips. I just can't take it anymore. I just want to die and go be with Jesus. That's what happens when you allow Marimna to stay and then Marimna come, becomes Marizzo and then your life, you just feel like you're falling apart. And it's all part of the emotional realm and you don't have to do that. That's why I'm showing you who's behind this. I'll pick this back up. I want to show you something here that it's kind of uh, really good to, and help you understand. But uh, this is so good understanding that the one that's defeated is the one trying to make me worry and I don't have to worry if he's already defeated. Hallelujah. All right. Well, thank you, partners, for joining us. And thank you, friends and family. And, and partners, your financial support is helping us so much reach so many people. So thank you for sending in those financial gifts. And we'll talk to you next time. We love you. Call you blessed. Have a Jesus-filled day. Do you ever feel like you're riding a nonstop emotional roller coaster through life? Do you want to stop the seemingly endless ups and downs and rounds and rounds? Then it's time to learn what God has to say about getting your feet and your emotions back on solid ground. It's all too easy to let life's events, experiences, and circumstances dictate how we feel, speak, and act. But God gave us a much better way to live. Larry Hutton's life-changing book, Internal Affairs, and CD series, Free From Me, will give you the Bible answers and show you how to keep every negative emotion under complete control, all the time, in every situation. You will learn how to overcome all your negative emotions and live in peace all the time. To order Eternal Affairs and Free From Me, go to LarryHutton.org or call 888-887-9673. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org, or you can call 888-887-WORD. 